welcome back to Litigation Help. My name is Heather Hui Twin, and in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of hearsay. So first of all, what is hearsay and why do courts generally don't like it? But why do they make tons of exceptions anyway? So joining me here today is our regular guest, family lawyer, Helena Burt. Hi, Helena. Hey, Heather. Nice to be back. It's been a oh, while. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I want to ask for your help today in explaining what hearsay is in the context of family law. And this is because recently there was this really interesting case, um, AM versus DM, um, in which the, the judge actually made a very detailed ruling about what statements were admissible and uh, what was what was not. Uh, and this ruling actually motivated me to kind of like think back to what hearsay is. Uh, and um, and I thought to myself, why not invite you to have a conversation with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, evidence. So, One of my favorite things of all times. Yeah, oh right. <laughs> well, I, I I remember actually hearsay was a really really um sort of I found it very difficult when I was taking um evidence law in in law school and it just my head was like and and actually I have to admit okay so even with this case uh, my head was spinning <laughs> some of them so I am so glad you're here to to help me out so what is hearsay exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay literally. It means to hear what is said, but by somebody else. So you're hearing okay. something that somebody said. So that's why they call it hear, say. So you're hearing what somebody else has said. Right. It's, it's one of the rules of evidence. And because of what happened is once we started going through a process where you had a trial or some kind of arbitrator who was listening to a, a dispute between at least two people, that there, was, there were people on different sides and each people would tell their side of the story. Right. And once that happened, courts had to start figuring out saying, well, what kind of things is it okay for the court to pay attention to? Mm -hmm. What things should they never pay attention to? And what things maybe could be risky, but what are the things that make it safe to listen to when you're trying to figure out what was actually said and done? Um, like we've gone through the thing on evidence before with video recordings and things like that. Then there's still reliability. Were they tampered with? Who was present? Um, whether it should be admissible if the person didn't know they were being recorded? All of those kind of stuff. Hearsay is actually one of the oldest rules of evidence. So the basic definition of hearsay, it's defined as any statement, either oral or written, that is made by a person other than a statement when they're actually testifying in court as a witness. And they're offering that statement that was made by another person or outside of the court to prove the truth of the matter that is the subject of the statement. So where you, it, you usually hear more about the rules of evidence and hearsay more than anything else is in the area of criminal law. That's right. So let's say, for example, I'm being called as a witness in a murder trial. Mm -hmm. and I get up into court and I testify that I heard the person who's accused of murder admit that they committed murder. That's hearsay. I, 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 I don't know. This person told, I didn't witness this person murdering somebody else. All I can testify is this person told me that they murdered somebody. So what it is, is I'm testifying about something. I don't know whether it's true or not. I'm just telling the court what somebody else told me it happened. And it may not be true. It, that person might be mistaken in what they're saying. It might be that they're, they're just making it all up. It could be they've got mental health issues. Mm -hmm. There could be all kinds of things about what could be wrong with that statement. So again, I can say that, yes, this person said this to me. But it's definitely not proof, for example, in this situation, that that person actually did murder this other person all i can do is tell the court that yeah the accused told me that he'd killed this person so if you actually saw someone um attack another person and if you said that at, at the trial right at, you're a witness and you said and, and you said, i saw i saw john hit bob that is not hearsay no it's not because i'm telling the court what i actually perceived heard and saw myself oh. And I am there in court, right. I'm testifying under oath, or I've affirmed that what I'm saying is the solemn um, truth. Um, the other side's lawyer can cross-examine me, they can right. challenge me on what I'm talking about, 
They can do anything that's, well, again, possible within the rules of the courtroom procedure mm -hmm. to test what I'm saying. But I am saying to the court and to the other side saying, this is what I saw and heard. But I'm there, I'm testifying in court. Now, again, if I if everything that I'm saying in court, I'm not actually saying in court, let's say I said it to my best friend, and then I I run away and I can't right. be called as a witness to court. Right. Hearsay would be the other side knowing, or the well, let's say it's the the prosecutor, and they would never do this because this is a complete blatant breach of the rules of hearsay. <laughs> would go to my friend, yeah. have my friend come to court yeah. and swear under oath that this is what I told them I saw. But my friend doesn't know anything about it. They just know what I told them. Right. They they don't know whether what I what I told them is true or not. So if you're coming into court to testify about something you saw, experienced, tasted, smelled, heard yourself, that's what evidence is. You're you're testifying as to what you saw, what you did, what you observed, what you participated in. Okay. But as soon as you put that other person in between and say, "Well, I'm coming right. into court to tell somebody else of what somebody else said." That's when you start getting into problems. And that, again, is then the next thing is, is okay, yep. so if that's what hearsay is, then why is hearsay bad? Yeah, why is hearsay bad? Okay. Yeah, and the whole, the rule against hearsay, like I said, is one of the oldest rules of evidence because the, mm -hmm. uh, the information that's being provided is unreliable because there's no way to test it or back it up or find out. Mm -hmm. Person who actually made the statement who said, yes, I personally experienced this, or I personally heard this, or I personally saw that, they're not present at court. They can't be cross-examined, mm -hmm. and there's no way to test the person who made the statement out of court about what their state of mind was, what they actually could see or not see, mm -hmm. what their, how good their memory is. Are they generally a liar, or are they generally a truthful person, or how sincere are they in what they're talking about? So that's the reason generally why hearsay is considered bad as a general rule. Mm. But then they said, well, sometimes though, there's gotta be exceptions. Sometimes there's a, a reason why you do want to allow hearsay in, in a court proceeding. Mm -hmm. So then the next question is, is saying, although hearsay generally is bad, when might hearsay be okay? And the concept they use to deal with this is called the principled approach. And the general rule is that hearsay is inadmissible. But under the principled approach, a hearsay statement can be admitted mm -hmm. if it is established at the hearing that one, the information that's being provided is necessary for the hearing, mm -hmm. and two, that the statement, the out-of-court statement that's being made that is hearsay is actually reliable. So under the principled approach, it means even though a statement is hearsay, there are certain circumstances and certain types of statements that um, a court will allow in for somebody to come into court to testify that they didn't directly personally experience. You see it again quite often, as I said, where you hear about this more than anything else is in criminal cases. But um, generally, the exceptions to the hearsay rule include, um, well, one of the biggest and most generic ones is business records. Oh. So if you've subpoenaed the um, an accountant's books because you're trying to prove something about somebody's income or the property they own, you can have that document entered as an exhibit at the trial, asking the judge to say, I am accepting this document and that the, the, the information that's contained in that document is accurate and true. But the document was prepared out of court. Mm -hmm. Unless you actually call the accountant who made those actual entries, mm -hmm. then that document itself is hearsay. That's right. Yeah. And even if another person from that accounting firm comes to court to talk about what's contained in those records, mm -hmm. they didn't make those records. They didn't do it. And they're also using information that was provided to them by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because like, if I tell you my business, you're my accountant, I tell you that the, my business was valued at $100,000. Then that's the number you put in that accountant's report in your mm -hmm. report. I'm relying on what you told me is saying, yeah, that business is worth a hundred thousand. But then that's created a business record, and now that business record is being introduced into court. So that's always why you got to be careful when you're dealing with hearsay evidence. Like how accurate is it? How true is it? Like for example, for the valuation of a business, the best way to do that is to have a professional evaluator get called as the witness, and they come to court and they testify under oath, saying yes. I am a professional appraiser. These are my credentials. Mm -hmm. This is my experience. This 
is what I did. I went out to do the appraisal of this business or the house or property or whatever. Mm -hmm. These are all the things that I looked at. And in my professional opinion, this house is worth X or this property or this business is worth X. But I'm testifying. I can be cross-examined. I can have be challenged. My I could be asked to produce my records. I could be asked to go back through them. Whereas if you just had somebody else from the firm that I work with come to court, then they're introducing what I said is hearsay. But if the records have been produced and they're reliable, and they get, then court will quite often let those kind of records in, even though the person that created the record isn't actually there to testify about it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah okay. So that's and that happens a lot in corporate commercial litigation. Um, the other thing, like again, party admissions, for example, like what we where we started out this conversation, where I'm saying Joe Schmuck admitted to me that he killed his wife. Okay, that's an admission against interest. So again, it's highly unlikely that somebody would say something like that unless it was true, because why would you do it, right? Mm -hmm. So in that person's criminal trial, it's an admission against their own personal interest. So that can be one of the exceptions to the hearsay rule. I could get up in court and testify, yeah, Joe told me he killed his wife, because why else would he say it? Hmm. Or else, let's say I'm a paramedic and I rush to the scene of a car crash, Joe is dying in his car crash, and he says, just before I die, I have to confess. I want to mm -hmm. cleanse my soul. I killed my wife three years ago. That's a, called a dying declaration. And again, mm -hmm. what reason would the person have to lie about it at that point? There's not going to be any consequences or anything else. So is the statement reliable? Would it be necessary in the case of proving whether Joe killed his wife or not? That could be an exception to the hearsay rule as a principle under the principled approach. Right? Mm, yes. Are we thoroughly confused yet? Yeah, I, this is bringing back a lot of memories from second year, I have to, <laughs> I have to admit. Um.